Hi, so we have studied uh, a lot of pattern recognition receptor and uh, if you see um, your previous sessions, we have started this pattern recognition with uh, uh, discovery component. We have, we have learned how the pattern recognition receptor concept was emerged and thereafter we have uh, learned how this pattern recognition receptor was discovered. The first pattern recognition receptor was a toll-like receptor and we have extensively studied toll-like receptor Then we have studied uh, discovery of uh, Rigai-like receptor and uh, then we have also studied various signaling pathway, the disease associated with uh, RLR pathway. And we have also studied uh, the nod-like receptors and we have again studied uh, the various ligand, the signaling pathway and the disease associated with uh, nod-like receptors. So, today we will take up uh, the last pattern recognition receptor and this pattern recognition receptor is a DNA sensor. Okay. And this DNA sensor, are, uh, uh, if you see, it's uh, it's very important in sensing various uh, uh, DNA viruses. Okay. So let's begin with uh, the discovery of uh, DNA sensor. And uh, if you see this slide, uh, you will understand that this the immunostimulatory property of uh, uh, DNA uh, in in order to induce antiviral uh, response was a uh, kind of um, discovered uh, uh, or noticed by the uh, scientist uh, about 50 years ago. Okay, and this is basically uh, started with uh, uh, with one simple observation when mammalian cells are when we introduce the DNA in mammalian cell, then that induces some kind of immunostimulatory uh, responses. Okay. So, if you see uh, carefully uh, the uh, pattern recognition receptor, toll-like receptor, so there is a one TLR which is uh, sensing the DNA molecule and uh, that TLR is TLR nine okay and this TLR nine basically TLR nine is also a DNA sensor and this TLR nine basically senses uh, hypomethylated uh, DNA molecule particularly CPG uh, uh, region in DNA which is uh, uh, quite abundant in in viruses and microbial uh, cells irrespective of uh, pathogen or non-pathogen compared to the mammalian uh, DNA. Okay, So, in general, the mammalian DNA is uh, quite uh, uh, heavily methylated and that is why they, they, they are not sensed by the TLR9. So, this is the uh, original uh, discovery of uh, uh, TLR9. Here you can see that this uh, this toll receptor basically recognizes the uh, bacterial DNA. And if you if you just carefully see, uh, Professor Shizu Akira is a is a person who has, a, uh, as I told you in in when I discussed the discovery of uh, uh, this pattern recognition receptor. So Professor Shizu Akira he basically characterized most of uh, these TLR sensors, various adapter and signaling molecules. So, this is a uh, one of a very good example. Uh, he basically characterized, uh, his he and his group uh, characterized this uh, TLR9. So, uh, people observed that uh, this uh, TBK1, if you remember the TBK1, TBK1 in TRIF dependent signaling. Okay. So, TBK1 is 
एसोसिएटेड विथ आई के के आई और आई के के एप्सलॉन ओके दिस दिस काइनेज बेसिकली फॉस्फोरेट आई आर एफ थ्री और आई आर एफ एंड देन दैट इंड्यूसेज द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टाइप वन इंटरफेर ओके सो पीपल ऑब्जर्व दैट द इंडक्शन ऑफ टाइप वन इंटरफेर इज बेसिकली डिपेंडेंट ऑन टी बी के वन ओके एंड दिस दिस सजेस्ट दैट ओके द सिग्नलिंग एक्सेस द टी बी के वन आई आर एफ थ्री एक्सेस इज सेम एज ट्रिफ डिपेंडेंट सिग्नलिंग और आर एल आर सिग्नलिंग ओके सो दिस सिग्नलिंग इज और दिस सिग्नलिंग एक्सेस दिस टी बी के वन आई के के आई आई आर एफ थ्री सिग्नलिंग एक्सेस इज ऑल्सो नीडेड फॉर द डी एन ए डिपेंडेंट इंडक्शन ऑफ टाइप वन इंटरफेर ओके सो इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल एक्सपेरिमेंट यू यू कैन वेरी इजिली प्रूव इट इफ यू हैव टी बी के वन नॉक आउट माइस ओके यू सिंपली इंट्रोड्यूस दिस पॉली डी ए डी टी और डबल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए पॉली डी ए डी टी इज अ सिंथेटिक लाइगेंड विच कॉमनली यूज फॉर एक्टिवेशन ऑफ डी एन ए डिपेंडेंट सिग्नलिंग ओके सो इफ यू इंट्रोड्यूस दिज दिस पॉली डी ए डी टी इन साइड द सेल बाय केमिकल मीन और बाय इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल मीन देन यू विल ऑब्जर्व दैट देर विल बी इंडक्शन ऑफ टाइप वन इंटरफेर बट दिस प्रोडक्शन ऑफ टाइप वन इंटरफेर will be completely abolished if you use the tbk1 knockout mice okay so this uh, this observation was uh, quite uh, uh, quite well taken by the scientific community and then this this uh, studies uh, uh, suggest that there are dna sensors which is upstream to the tbk1 and that dna sensors basically bind with dna molecule and induces tbk1 uh, irf3 dependent type 1 interferon okay so so this is a, this this the simple experiment also uh, creates a question in innate uh, among innate immunobiologists okay and uh, that result to the discovery of uh, dna sensors okay so the first uh, 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 the first dna sem- sensor which was uh, Uh, reported in uh, uh, around uh, if you see carefully it is for the first dna sensor was reported in 2007 okay and this is the dna sensor so so this group uh, this is uh, again japanese group this taniguchi group uh, uh, discovered the uh, or reported first uh, cytosolic dna sensor or receptor okay and they gave this name uh, dai okay dna dependent activator of irfs okay so this name was given uh, by this group uh, to this dna sensor this is also known as a dlm and zbp1 okay and uh, this this work was uh, uh, this work was quite uh, Uh, well uh, established that okay there is a some dna sensor and this dna sensor can sense and induce tbk1 dependent and irf3 dependent induction of type 1 interferon so this uh, this uh, uh, this this dai dai sensor is also inducing uh, nf kappa b activation in order to induce inflammatory cytokine okay after binding with the dna okay this was a uh, first uh, discovery the discovery of dai another uh, concept was emerged that uh, uh, you know that uh, genome uh, our genome is uh, having a uh, 80 rich sequences okay and it was suggested that rna polymerase 3 is a uh, capable of uh, transcribing this at rich double stranded dna okay 
and uh, uh, this uh, basically creates uh, RNA molecule and that uh, 50 uh, around 50 uh, base pair uh, uh, RNA molecule is having this uh, triphosphate motif and this triphosphate motif if you remember can activate the rigai okay so they this uh, this work basically suggested that dna is sensed uh, uh, but it is indirectly sensed by rigai. So, there will be a poly DADT and this poly DADT is uh, first transcribed to the RNA molecule which uh, will have this uh, triphosphate motif and this RNA molecule with this triphosphate motif will be sensed by rigai and then there will be a uh, TBK1 IRF3 dependent production of uh, type 1 interferon. Okay. This, uh, uh, this was uh, basically uh, uh, supported by two research paper if you can see uh, the middle panel as well as the bottom panel this uh, which suggested that uh, RNA polymerase 3 plays a very important role in DNA sensing indirectly DNA sensing. Okay. But um, uh, we have uh, um, uh, there is a report uh, that uh, showed that uh, this uh, DAI uh, uh, is not playing important role in in vivo condition. Okay, uh, in vivo condition they do not sense the DNA uh, vaccine. Okay, and they are not uh, important in production of. Uh, type 1 interferon. So, this can be very easily achieved this there is a simple experiment if you have a DAI knockout mice and if you stimulate with a, a DNA molecule then if it is still inducing the production of type 1 interferon then that will suggest that uh, so DAI is not very important ok. Maybe in some cell type it is uh, maybe play, playing an important role, but uh, in general in vivo under physiological condition DAI is not uh, very crucial. Okay. So, here you can see that uh, there is a work uh, that uh, tank binding kinase 1 delineate innate and adaptive immune responses to DNA vaccine. So, this work basically uh, suggested the same. So, D, uh, DAI is a cell type specific and uh, that uh, polymerase uh, RNA polymerase 3 rigai pathway uh, is uh, only uh, detected AT rich DNA and this work uh, all these work clearly suggest that there must be another or additional cytosolic uh, uh, DNA sensors okay, and that need to be discovered. So, in research is uh, giving a question is also very very important or giving a direction to the research is also very important. So, this all this work uh, gave a direction for the discovery of uh, uh, DNA sensors. Okay. So, uh, after that uh, um, uh, there was a discovery of one molecule um, which is a uh, which is basically a adapter protein. Uh, called as a sting and this sting when this sting was discovered simultaneously this molecule was reported by several other groups and uh, they gave different name like meta, mpys, eris. So, all these names were given uh, independently ok when when a sting was reported simultaneously uh, the same molecule were reported by other group with a different name. And people showed that uh, this sting directly uh, engage or activate uh, TBK1 okay, upon DNA stimulation. So, this suggested that uh, this, uh, this sting is playing very important role in activation of TBK1 and subsequent activation of IRF3. However, this sting is not directly binding to the uh, to the DNA molecule suggesting that this is not a sensor maybe this is a one of signaling transducer ok signal transducer of uh, this DNA sensing pathway and people suggested it as a adapter ok. 
So there are several papers which was uh, published uh, almost together. Here you can see, and uh, all this work suggests that uh, sting is playing a important role in DNA sensing. However, it is not directly interacting with DNA molecule, and it is inducing the type one interferon depend on TBK1 and IRF3. So, so, so that uh, basically uh, is a, uh, a very important uh, or very key finding uh, after DAI. DAI was uh, uh, not successful in vivo condition. So, uh, Sting was a uh, quite uh, uh, correct uh, discovery and uh, this plays a very important role and this is playing an uh, important role upstream to the TBK1. Okay. So, uh, since then a uh, lot of work was uh, performed and then there was a uh, discovery of various DNA sensor and uh, here you can see that uh, since 2009 at least uh, 10 protein have been proposed as a cytosolic uh, DNA sensors. Here this is a very nice uh, schematic uh, also and uh, those molecules are AIM2, if you remember AIM2 in, in NLR. So, AIM2 basically bind with the uh, DNA molecule and it induces IL-1 family cytokine. Okay. IFI-16, IFI-16 is uh, also playing a very important role in induction of uh, type 1 interferon and inflammatory cytokines upon stimulation with DNA. Okay. And other molecule like uh, LRRFIP1, DHX9, DHX36, DDX41, KU70, DNAPK, MRE11 and CGAS, STING and RED50. So, all these are uh, several, uh, several DNA sensor and here you can see the coronal uh, the discovery of these molecule in chronological order. If you see this uh, uh, graphical representation, the first uh, uh, DNA sensor was uh, which was discovered and well documented is uh, TLR9. After that, uh, there is a discovery of DAI. Uh, however, uh, it was uh, uh, it was suggested that in vivo they may not play a very important role. After that. Uh, AIM-2 was discovered, involvement of RNA polymerase 3 was uh, reported and subsequently various uh, DNA sensor was reported. And uh, uh, all these uh, DNA sensors uh, basically uh, play a very important role in induction of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine which is NF-kappa B dependent and production of uh, type 1 interferon. In next session, I will talk about the uh, DNA uh, sensors uh, and what are the ligands and what kind of signaling pathway they activate. Thank you. Thank you very much.